Good morning, world. It's a brand new day. Look at that, Fran. There's actually a phone in this one. We stopped to have Laura Maisie serviced at Tooley's Boatyard in the heart of Banbury. Immortalised in Tom Rolt's amazing popular book, Narrowboat, Tooley's has been working continuously as a boatyard since 1778, and the forge building being a scheduled ancient monument. Recent retail developments dwarf the old boatyard, which resembles little of its past glory days. You do, Fran. Don't make me sneeze. This is curry powder. We've treated ourselves to some shelves and spice jars. And I'm, what do I always say? I'm dead chuffed. Chuffed, she is. <laughs> They're really nice. We use, make a lot of curries with just basic spices. And uh, rather than buying pastes because it's just cheaper and more convenient. And I have to dive down the back of the cupboard every time I want garam masala or something. So now, it's all there and spices are a brilliant thing to have on the boat because you can always make you can always make a curry or a meal with virtually nothing a tin of chickpeas and some spices and we're away so there we go You nicked my job. <laughs> I've got fed up with waiting. <laughs> We're on a mission before the wind hits us. Oh yeah, it's going to be windy today, isn't it? Double the strength of wind this afternoon, so yes, I can't sit around waiting for you. Oh dear. So we're in the lovely village of Crocrody, famous for its folk festival that happens every August, organised by Fairport Convention, the band. Something we'd love to go to, but we're not around this year. Uh, we've got an easy day today. We've just got to go two miles and get through four locks. Elkington lock ahead of us, uh, which is being closed on Monday for repairs for a, a couple of weeks, I think. So we want to get the other side of that. So yeah, just a very easy Saturday.
Well, we managed to moor up in the gale winds. It was uh, a bit hair raising, wasn't it? Oh, really noisy night as well. And the boat was rocking around, wasn't it? it really kept us awake. Putting the canopy at the back was uh, really interesting, wasn't it? But uh, <laughs> we managed it in the end. And we've been here now for about four days, four nights, Fran, I think. We made it our little home, to it's be honest. <laughs> fantastic little woodland area here. And uh, we're completely taking advantage of it, using all the fallen wood to keep the fire going, saving us a lot of money on uh, not using the coal. It's been marvellous and you've been out and about more than me, haven't you, gathering wood? Yeah, and... I mean every day I come and forage for kindling and just break that up and dry it overnight and it lights beautifully because it's old wood and it's ash wood which burns really, really easily. But there's lots all along the edge of the wood there, there's big, big pieces. So we're going to go and gather a load today, I think, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to fill up the locker in the front of the boat and uh, have a look, a bit of a tidy up for the boat, be clean outside and uh, get back in for lunch. The dogs think this is their own private little garden yeah. it's just, and there's nobody hardly on this towpath, just you know one or two people a day walk past because we're near nothing. Um, so it's a lovely private little spot isn't it? It's, it's fabulous, beautiful and uh, We need Archie's to grow some vegetables here and have it as our own. <laughs> Archie's in digging heaven, isn't he? Look at him with his nose in a hole. Yeah. I've just seen um, quite a few corn on the cob husks. So I think it's, I don't think there's badgers living here, but I think it's a badger root somewhere. They've obviously been feasting here. Yeah, there's a few little paths running through the woodland area here. It's uh, interesting. Anyway, it's getting cold just standing here. Let's chop some wood. Yep. to put it in the water, Fran. I didn't do that. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> all we got to do is stop the dogs chewing it. Yeah, there's little pieces of wood all along the towpath now where Jess keeps running off with the wood as I'm cutting it. That's not a help. As soon as the weather warms up a little bit, we're going to get the paint pot out and start touching up a few pieces on the side of the boat that have been scratched going through locks. We've got that matte paint which covers really well, so it's not much of a job. I don't know if you can see, but we've got some faint scratches going along the side of the boat here, where um, branches on the side of the canal have hit the boat. And to be honest, there's not a lot we can do about that, and especially on this canal, that it's narrow, so narrow in places, you're going to get the branches scratching down the side of the boat. So this is automotive paint, so I think with a bit of tea cut or something, we can work those out. If anybody else has got any suggestions, answers on the postcard, please. Well, that was a mad hour's work, wasn't it? That oh, was great fun. It was good fun, yeah. Really yes. enjoyed that. And before anybody says you need to get a chainsaw or a petrol <laughs> saw, we don't want one because uh, we actually quite like the work. Yeah, it's good exercise <laughs> sawing up wood. It yeah. warms us. What did I say? It warms you up twice. Yes. When you're cutting up wood. So um, There's a guy behind us on a yeah. boat. Uh, well, I say behind us. He's about a mile or so away. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got a chainsaw and he's actually cutting down uh, live mm. ash trees. Because ash is a wood that will burn um, straight away. You don't have to cure it or what's the season it. Season it. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's not something I think is a, it's not a done thing really, We is wouldn't, it? Uh, definitely not. I mean, it's, no. it's private land, whether it's owned by the Canal and River Trust or by a farmer, it's private land. And I guess technically, maybe we shouldn't even be picking up bits of dead wood, but I know nobody would mind the farmer farmer was out there yesterday when I was gathering some and he was fine um, but with the wind that we've had lately and it has been really windy there's so much wood in yeah, there it's, it's not there? fresh wood it's dead wood that's been hanging on the trees and it's just been blown down and uh, so we've got a nice locker full at the front now and a bag full 
and uh, that's going to keep us going for a week maybe yeah we, we, well i wouldn't say we need it now but the price of fuel obviously it's hitting everybody across the country i don't know other countries but in uk the price of fuel is gone up astronomically mm, and it's mad. hitting boaters too coal has gone up from when we first got the boat it was we were paying nine pounds ten pounds for a bag of coal we're paying now we're paying 14 pounds 14 pounds 50. yeah and uh, gas we used to get gas for about 24 pounds and now it's 40 45 pounds <laughs> so not just because of the cost but also for the environment um, this the cost has just made us be a lot more aware of what we're doing mm. and we're really being conscious not to use so much fuel um, but when we are using it to use it as economically as possible so the fire and the stove have always nearly always got a kettle on the top or food in the oven or on the top we're cooking every day at least one meal on the fire yeah, aren't we yeah, yeah. Um, you've we've got gone mad on porridge haven't we <laughs> absolutely mad on yeah. porridge it's great you get up in the morning you soak the oats overnight in milk or uh, soya we use and then put it on the stove in the morning and whilst we're chit-chatting and getting the dogs breakfast and letting the dogs out etc it's cooking it's, it's brilliant fantastic and it doesn't stick to the pan either like it does on the cooker no does it? it doesn't so the bread all the bread is being made in the fire um i can only make little tiny loaves because it's a small oven but that's fine i haven't baked bread on the in the gas oven for months so it's really going to be interesting high. to see how long a bottle of gas will last us now we're using the fire and this is the you know the reason why we had this stove put in because of its dual versatility yeah and um yeah. we put a gas bottle in fresh gas bottle in on the 11th of december so it'll be interesting to see how long it will last they normally last us three months yeah on the last boat particularly uh, so we shall see. So I'm actually going to try over the next few videos as well to um, be a bit, not experimental, but do a little bit more about the cooking and about cooking using less gas, using less energy, which will be applicable for everybody, won't it? So Yeah, so they can all share what I have to eat. Raw carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Very economical. <laughs> the stove, it, it's, uh, we had a red stove and um, we liked it initially when it went in, but it well, because we open the door to let more coal on, put more coal on, it's got black, hasn't it, yeah. above above the door? Yeah. So um, it's not a problem. We have got red paint that we can top it. Yeah. And I guess you know, once a year, it's going to be a sprinkling. Yeah, job. we'll we'll wait until we stop using it and then paint it again, spray it, and uh, all the base is all metal, so we can give that a black in as well, can't we? We are wondering whether we should have just gone for a black stove like everybody uh, else. Yeah. But there you go. <laughs> yeah. So what else? Um, we cranked here last week. We've been here for five days now, I think, and it's a fabulous mooring spot. As we've said, we've got the trees yeah. on that side of us where the bird feeder is and where we've gathered our wood. This side of us is just open countryside for miles, isn't it? We absolutely love it here, don't we? We're yeah. just so reluctant to move, <laughs> but we've got to move tomorrow because we need water and uh, we've got to do four or five locks tomorrow, yeah. haven't we? And uh, fill up with water. And then do some walking again because we've not done much walking this last week have we we haven't honest? done i had a birthday which was a bit of a lazy day and uh, it has been really really gusty and windy um, but we've really noticed as well we're having this open spot um the light we've really noticed now in the morning it's bright when we're getting up mm. it's light until almost six o'clock in the evening and the solar panels have gone crazy. The difference, they? <laughs> yeah, the difference already we've noticed. It's uh, it's amazing. So it's yeah. keeping us in all the energy we need for our laptops and radios, etc. Isn't it? It's, it's fabulous. And when we are yeah. moored up like this, we don't run the engine at all. No. So that's great. No, so right. I mean, a few times, sorry. All right. Go on. A few times in the depth of winter we've had to like de yeah, December yeah. January yeah. but now we won't need to at all the it's, solar's it's doing everything brilliant. Yeah. and the bonuses as well we've had these fabulous sunsets and I'm having to restrain myself from putting them on Facebook because every evening you go on Facebook and there's loads of boaters sunset pictures going on there but we've had some beautiful skies haven't we and the morning really? as well the first thing in the yeah. morning has been some beautiful sunrises it's just yeah. a treat to, to be able to open the curtains and see all this countryside it's it will never lose its appeal 
Never. That's the great thing about this country, I guess. You know, we get lots of comments from people say they couldn't stand that they've moved away from the UK and can't stand the dismal winters. But we love it because yeah, of this variation, really. So we'll see when we move tomorrow if we can find such a nice mooring spot. Um, we can't get off the canal until the end of February because of more yeah. stoppages ahead of us. 25th of February, we, we can get actually get off. Well, we're still on the Oxford Canal, but it to a point where we uh, can continuously cruise again without having to wait for closures to end. So yeah, 25th of Feb and we'll be uh, moving as normal again. Yeah, yeah. But you've been uh, cracking on with your weaving, haven't you, whilst we've been uh, stood still? Yeah, I've had a few new ideas, so I'm just going to show you briefly. Um, I've done some extra wide, extra thick winter shawls. Yes, lovely. Um, they nearly never made it to the shop because it's just such a nice thing to wrap around yourself in the evenings but they are there's two of those going into the shop all pure wool um, and organic cotton but a few people had asked if I did any vegan friendly scarves so obviously that's no wool no silk in them so I thought I'd have a go and these are completely recycled um, yarns and cotton so I've done two extra long vegan scarves which are going into the shop so that's a new thing I don't know how popular that's going to be vegan. we will see no. um, I like the green one you've done of that is that down there yes yeah, yeah. somewhere here it's and it's amazing because these two scarves are done on the same warp um, but it's just what's woven into them so you get two such different things on the it's same lovely. walk absolutely lovely but um yeah and i bought myself over christmas a tiny little hand loom and i've made loads of these until i got it right i've had to experiment but i've started making little bookmarks now um so once i've got a whole selection of colors they're going to go into the shop as well i think i've got about 10 bookmarks that didn't work that <laughs> So I've got so many books on the go now, um, but I thought they might just be a nice little yeah, thing. Yeah, they're quite nice, aren't they? Um, quite cute. And if anybody's got any ideas of things that I might make, or if you, I can't make things to order, I just can't do it. It just makes my head go crazy. But if you want more shawls, doesn't take much. <laughs> well, that's living with you that does that. If you want shawls, if you want narrow scarves or table mats, table runners, just send me ideas of what I should These be These are good, aren't they? These um, mug rugs. I keep saying rug mugs. <laughs> but they're great. They're You're really, a rug mug. Yeah, they're really handy, aren't they? <laughs> they're lovely. Yeah, we like those. So, yeah, yeah. anyway, set me a challenge and um, oh, I'll dear. see what I you've can do. Oh dear, you've said it now. You've said it. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not weaving underwear for Rich, so don't ask. Not since the last time, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about it for this video. It's a little short video. We haven't been doing much cruising, so um, that reflects in the length of the video. And uh, thanks for watching again. And if you haven't watched before, please go back and see our old videos. Yeah, and um, keep watching for more walking and more cookery and more cruising and, yeah maybe another little change of plans to come but we'll oh, talk more don't. about that next things week things are up in the air a bit aren't they <laughs> so until we definitely know what's happening we'll keep shtum yeah so thanks again for watching thank you all the best take care bye